welcome to the Power Through the Fourth Whistle Roller Derby Podcast. This is Jackie Bauer. Thank you for joining me today on the path to becoming better athletes, teammates, leaders, and human beings. You can subscribe, rate, and review this podcast on iTunes. Reviews are really helpful. I really love making this podcast for you guys, and if you can just take one minute, one minute out of your day to just scroll through and leave a little five stars, maybe a little comment, that would help other people find this podcast, and I would love that. Another place you can leave reviews, I just learned recently, is Facebook. They added a tab for this, so you can go to the Facebook page and leave a review, help people find this stuff. Where is the Facebook page, you might be asking? Well, it's at facebook.com slash power through fourth whistle. That's P-O-W-E-R-T-H-R-U, the number four, T-H-W-H-I-S-T-L-E. It's like I practiced spelling in the last week. You can also email your derby thoughts to powerfourthwhistle at gmail.com. It's like I just spelled, but without the through. See what I did? And you can hit us up on Twitter, at Power Fourth Whistle. Please, teach me how to tweet. I I will be, you know, your humble, I don't know, Jedi or something. Uh, What's the learner? Like Padawan? I don't know. I have to learn my terms. So, I'm really excited about today's episode. I've been thinking about it since... I started the Facebook page, really. It's it's a place where I wanted people who wanted to who wanted to learn more about roller derby, get better at roller derby, stay informed, get inspired. That's all the stuff I put there on the Facebook page. And the target audience is veteran skaters, but also rookie skaters, just anyone who's super excited. And there is almost no one more excited than rookie skaters. I do not love the term fresh meat. And I'll tell you why. It sounds like like we put all these kids out there and they're kids in my eyes until they graduate because they're just so adorable. Um, And we just like, I don't know, pound them with those wooden mallet things. And I don't like the idea that we're just pounding on these people until they come out the way we want. Um, Or that we're like, sharks circling around them waiting for somebody to bleed or something I don't know like everything about it in my head while it sounds catchy it's just kind of a negative connotation to me like I'm not judging anyone who really likes that term but for me I prefer rookie skaters because because you're new and I, I don't like saying new skaters all the time because at a certain point you're not new anymore but like there are some skaters who don't pass in the first year and continue to come around, I still consider you a rookie skater. You're not new anymore. You've been here a while, but for some reason, there's something holding you back from passing your skills. And today we are talking about how do you pass your skills? How do you become roller derby eligible? Eligible to be rostered. How do you get past this this big test? So, When you start out in roller derby, when you come for your first practice, if you already had been, some point in your life at least, working out regularly in some way, you already have a big advantage when you come in. If you ever in your lifetime played a sport, especially a team sport, you have a huge advantage on the mental side of this. Some people never played on a team never had to learn how to work with other people in this way. Dealing with wins and losses, there's just so much to that. Uh, If you've never experienced it before, it's a big learning curve for those of us who've just never had it before. I'm one of the people who never played a sport before roller derby. Not really. I never played on a team. I went to a one-week basketball camp in the fifth grade. I wasn't very good. (laughs) But moving on. Um, but if you've never worked out before, like you weren't, you weren't physical, you weren't athletic, you weren't in training and you didn't sport it up. If you still want it badly enough, it is 
absolutely possible to make it in roller derby. People make it all the time and it's because they fall in love with the sport. The journey is more difficult, but it's also even more rewarding. The teammates I have had who in the beginning looked like they'd never make it, they're just Bambi on ice out there, not sure they're ever gonna get there, they can go on to become total badasses, like critical players in big games. I just swore, and I don't wanna mark this as explicit, like pretend I didn't say it. Okay, but these amazing players, the ones who started from pretty much nothing and become amazing, they're just nothing short of inspiring. And you can do it too. So like the first basic advice is practice anything you can do on skates, anything. If you can put your skates on at home, if you're allowed to wheel around on your floors, do it. Because anything you can do on your skates will make you a better skater. Don't be afraid of falling or looking like a fool. Learn how to fall well. It's not the sexiest thing to practice, but I would say it's arguably the most important besides knowing how to stand up without falling down on your skates is learning how to fall really well so that you can go out there with confidence learning and not worry about what's going to happen if you fall because you know how to do it right and never stop trying to get your new skills right practice the tough ones whenever you can get there early stay late if that's allowed do it during water breaks In the beginning of derby, it's all about accumulating time on skates to get more comfortable, more fluid, balanced, and confident. Encourage yourself. Be honest and see where you don't quite have it all yet. Recognize your progress. Like always be looking for progress. Nine years into my derby career, I am still looking for progress Anywhere and everywhere I can get it. I am never done learning. So um, I'm hoping at some point you may have heard of Malcolm Gladwell's 10,000 Hours. If you haven't, uh, there's a book all about it. It's a really great read. I actually really enjoy reading all of Malcolm Gladwell's books. I'm a nerd. It's okay. Through tons of research, he found out that for anyone to become truly a master of their craft, they had to put in 10,000 hours of deliberate practice. You know, Jedi training. That's not just goofing around. That's really trying to be good at something, always having a goal, striving for better. So that's just proof that being really good takes time. Don't be discouraged if someone who started Derby at the same time as you seems to be picking up the skills faster. Everyone has a different journey. Your goal should be noticeable improvement every week. Every skater has rapid growth in their first year, so this is not an unrealistic expectation. So let's get to the big one. This is the one everyone thinks about, the 27 in five, 27 laps in five minutes time trial. I hope I don't end up dating this episode by saying 27 laps in five minutes, because as many of you know, it used to be 25 and five, which really rolled off the tongue super nice. But then the WFTDA voted to increase the minimum requirement. It's five minutes, 300 seconds. Why do we do this? This never happens in a game, right? This test isn't a realistic game situation. I know that. But this is still an excellent hurdle for all of you to get over. This is a true test of do you have what it takes to roller derby? Because this test is a test of your physical endurance, your mental toughness, and your skating skills after exhaustion. Can you stay in control of yourself when you are tired? You get through this, you can handle playing in a game. They make it hard, making sure it's 27 laps in five minutes because they wanna make sure that you're good and tired. They wanna see what you've got. Can you handle this? Because if you can handle this, 
you can really handle just about anything. So to pass the time trial or your laps, it really takes four major elements. One, skating form. You have to be able to do crossovers. They do not need to be speed skating perfect to achieve 27 laps. I've seen plenty of people pass this test with crossovers that are like just okay. Uh, but you should always be working to improve them. I, I do not see people pass this test without being able to do them at all. You need to be able to do them. They don't have to be perfect, but you should be striving towards better. You also want to run the track with your crossovers. The term run the track, it means coming as close to the inside line without going over it as you can on the turns and back to the outside line on the straightaways. It seems really weird that you'd want to go to the outside at all because the inside line is the shortest path, but if you're building up speed, this momentum will keep you in more of a circle instead of an oval. And in some diagrams, it's a little bit more of like a rounded diamond shape. It doesn't have to be perfect. The, the point is you're going to build up a lot of speed in that first lap, and then you need to continue the skating pattern as crisply as you can, as regularly as you can, so you don't lose momentum. You're gonna lose a tiny bit around the turns and you're gonna like cruise for a second and then you gotta get right back to it. Like not even a second, a split second, you can cruise for like a step and then you must cross over again. You need the speed to succeed, especially when you're tired. So this is gonna carry you, this pattern. The second element to passing your time trial is having muscles that are strong enough to carry you across the finish line. Muscle strength, power, and memory. The strength, it's, it's really hard to stay down in good skating form for five minutes straight without coming back up, without straightening up. You can work on this by doing wall sits, chair pose. You need a really strong core. If your back is hurting, it's because it's doing more work than your abs to keep you in this position. So you could do more planks. It's not about crunches to get a strong core in this case because the situation you're trying to address is a position where you are holding your body in a certain way with strength. So you need to come at it with something where you're holding up your body with strength, not where you're moving around all over the place. You wanna get that plank. Also your muscle, power and memory. I could say do squats, but you should be doing them anyway. Um, but I'm going to address a few exercises th that are really specific to skating stride. I might be making a video about this soon. And if I do, I will put a link to it in the show notes. So watch for that. Watch for it on the Facebook page because I have the equipment for this stuff so I can make a quick video to show you what this looks like. If you have one of those big resistance bands, ones that people uh, use to help with pull-ups. You can put it around a doorknob or something else that will support it. Then work on doing that crossover step in your shoes with resistance. You're gonna wrap this band around your hip or you can hold it with your hand, but you're just gonna be kind of controlled falling into the step. And it's not really a fall because you are pushing. Um, there's a lot of emphasis when we learn crossovers on, oh, it's the foot that's going over and doing the step. That's that's a crossover, right? It's actually the opposite foot on the ground pushing underneath that is doing the work in that moment. It's really deceptive. So if you need to think about it as cross-unders, then think about it that way. Um, this exercise will help the real power player leg get the focus and you can feel it doing the work. And obviously, you need to do this both directions. You cannot only cross over one way forever. You will end up with a lopsided body, which most of us have, but we're working on it. We would like to be more balanced. The other move is crossovers with a friend. Instead of using an elastic band, use a big band that doesn't have any stretch to it. Something really strong, something it can be similar to like a TRX strap if you've seen those. It just needs to be a strong strap and you're gonna wrap it around your body the same way and your friend is going to be the resistance. 
You want to pick somebody who's like maybe similar in weight to you or at least strong enough to hold your weight because you are going to be giving them some of your weight while you work on the crossover. They're going to give you resistance and you are going to work on crossing over. And this way you're going to be doing both of your legs. You're going to be doing the whole movement and you can do this across the length of a room and then go back the other way, do this back and forth a few times. It's so nice to be able to practice both moves with equal resistance and uh, it gets your body in a little bit of that diagonal that you see when people are going around the turns. You're, you're not straight up and down. You're a little bit curved in. Your upper body's curved in toward the track. So um, I, I, I'm sorry that I keep trying to talk about something visual on an audio format. I will try to make a video. The third big element to passing your time trial is endurance your lung capacity, and control over your heart rate. This is most difficult for people who maybe came into derby from without previous conditioning or those who suffer from sports asthma. Sadly, I'm not a doctor. I do not have the answers for the sports asthma people at this time. If anyone has any tips about this, please email or comment or something. Send me a message because I would love to share more information if you have it. But for the people without asthma, well, and the asthma people can do this too. I just don't know if there's specifics for asthma. Start with interval training. Do something really, really, really hard for 30 seconds and then walk or something else that's low intensity for 30 seconds and repeat until you've done at least five minutes of high intensity total. So this is where you start. You start low. Then you're gonna like step it up to one minute of high intensity. And then you start shortening your low intensity periods. Uh, maybe one minute versus 15 seconds. Or one and a half minutes, 15 seconds. Two minutes, 10 seconds. Like until you can work really hard for five minutes without feeling like you're gonna pass out or die or whatever. You're not like getting dizzy. This could be done on a treadmill. You could do it on an elliptical machine outside, doing burpees, jumping rope. You can vary the different exercises you do. Roller Derby Athletics is a really great resource for high intensity interval training. I've been doing her workouts for years. Uh, Iron Octopus is another good resource for training. But the goal is to do an exercise you can safely do that will take you close to the top of your heart rate. Not all the way, but close. And the more you practice this, the easier it will be for your heart to take it will start to say, well, this isn't so bad. You'll be able to breathe through it. Something you couldn't do a, a minute of without feeling like you were gonna collapse, you will finish. And some things will never feel easy. I've been asked all the time, do burpees get easier? Well, they're always going to be hard, but your body will handle them better. It's a, there might always be a degree of suck. <laughs> There's gonna be some suck, but your body will handle it better. It won't want to die afterward. It'll just be like, well, that was hard, but we did it. So you, by if you're really pushing yourself, you're going to feel more confident, more in control, less shaky than you were in the beginning. So do something like this that's going to challenge your heart rate. It can be whatever you want it to be, something that you enjoy even. But you need to do it at least three times a week for real results. Especially if you've never had this type of training before, you need to build in a routine so that your body can get used to the idea of this. It doesn't have to even be long. It can be like 10 minutes worth of work total. And that's nothing. I mean, but your heart and lungs need this to carry you through intense situations like this time trial for laps. When you do your laps, breathe with control. Pace it out as you're going around the track. Figure out what your rhythm is for crossing over and breathing and just stick to it. Finally, the fourth element, this is a big one, that will help you complete your time trial is mental strength. Pushing past what you think you know and fighting the lies your body is telling you. Because your body will tell you, oh, my legs are too sore to do this. Oh, I, I can't breathe. Your body's going to tell you these things and you're going to have to be like, no, we're doing this. It's on. Mental strength really gets a lot of people because I see them skating strong crossovers at practice. I see that they have muscle power and speed when they're doing an endurance drill and they're asked to sprint. 
I see them go through drills that are much longer than five minutes overall. And it's hard, but they push themselves. They come out tired, but they're really happy with the results. So I know that these people have the capacity to do this, but there's something about that stopwatch and somebody watching you and counting your laps that gets in their heads. Why does this change as soon as this happens? It's your mindset under pressure. And pressure is something you're going to have to deal with to play a sport, any sport. So you need mental repetition, mental reps, just like anything physical, to know you can do this. Practice positive self-talk during other drills. You got to have a pep talk. Things like, you're stronger than this. You're faster than this. Finish strong. Don't go down without a fight. Like whenever your muscles are saying, I can't go on, you say, no, we're going, we're going to do this. Like you're, I'm not letting myself down today. I want to go home proud because the one you really have to impress is that little voice inside your head when you're trying to go to sleep at night. Because if you're lying in bed and that little voice says you could have gone harder, that's hard. That's really hard. How are you going to sleep after that? It's all about that little voice, you know, but if you push through it, if you truly gave it everything you had, even if you didn't make it this time, that little voice is going to be like, all right, good job on next time. We're going to get it, you know? Also think about introducing real stakes. If, if you're close, but you're not getting it, maybe it's the fact that, you know, there's a lot of like every... All the teams are really nice. All the leagues are really nice. They'll let you do this as many times as you need to. Actually, I shouldn't say that. Some big leagues you have to try out. And if you didn't pass this test, you might have to come back months later and try again. But most of the teams I know will let you do this test as often as you need to until you pass. Maybe you need to introduce like a real, real like threat something that gives this stakes. So I was at a class with Miracle Whips at RollerCon this past year, and she talked about situations having real stakes. She talked about the importance of getting lead jammer. And she said, oh, I'm not going to try to do the accent. It's not really that good. But if you're going to, if you don't get lead jammer, they are going to take your cat. Like what? No. Like there are people who are coming to take your cat. If you don't get lead, it's your cat. Skate for your cat. Fight for your cat. Or the equivalent of your cat. Maybe it's your dog. Something you really love. People are coming to take it from you if you do not do this. Like you just, you got to put something on the line. I remember there was a time we were helping a girl pass her laps. We came in one day and she really wanted to have a beer afterward, you know? And so she's coming around. She's so close. And we had the beer ready and we put it out there on the finish line for her last lap. And oh, did she go for it? <laughs> and she got it. <laughs> she got there. She had something to skate for. There was a beer sitting right there. Like whatever that thing is to you, like make it real, make it real in your mind. It, like it's not it's easy to not put pressure on ourselves in this situation, you know, like, oh, I'm not feeling well today. I'll do it next time. But what if you made this do or die right now? Like, have you ever heard the expression, uh, burn the boats? This comes from, um, uh, army came across the sea to fight another army to make sure no one lost heart or wanted to retreat. They burned the boats they arrived in. There's no way back. We're not going home. Their choices are victory or death. It sounds like really intense, right? It should. And I'm not saying that you have to necessarily like put all this intense pressure on yourself because you'll get tense and you won't skate as well. But what I'm saying is in your mind, make this something that must happen, that will happen with complete confidence. So before starting your time trial, Take some deep breaths. Just get yourself nice and centered. Confident breaths. Breathe in confidence. Breathe out fear. Breathe in winning. 
Breathe out losing. Tell yourself, you've got this. You are strong. You are fast. You can handle anything. Take your time lining up. Breathe. Shake it all out. Do a quick little dance. Shake out all the nerves. Smile. Laugh. Like, greet this challenge like, you know, oh yeah? Well, we'll see who's boss. I am going to climb this mountain. I am going to burn it down. Like, whatever you need. Like, say the things to yourself that will work. You know you. What do you need to hear? Sometimes I need to be told that someone thinks I can't do it. <laughs> you never know. Um, or someone, someone needs, someone like in my life likes to put challenges in front of me. And that person is my husband slash coach. He's like, oh, well, I don't know if you can really do this. Do you think you can do this? Like if I, <laughs> he puts it out there like, well, you going to go handle that? And then I'm like, oh, yeah, because I need to prove you wrong. And it gets me super pumped up. <laughs> Sometimes I get really mad at him about it, but it does work. It works. So how am I supposed to be mad? Okay. So those are the four main elements. But I do have some follow-up pro tips. Ways to get better at laps in general. Or if you are really close but not quite making it, here's a few ideas to help you get there. So uh, some basic things to think about are you, number one, are you properly warmed up first? Like don't static stretch before you go do these laps. Like you got to be warm. You have to have skated a few laps, uh, stretch out your shins, your quads, like everything, like dynamic stretching, moving around, be ready to go. Second pro tip, do you have the right wheels for this floor? I talked about wheels in a different episode, but you want to have wheels that are grippy enough for the floor, because if you feel like you're going to slip, you're not going to push as hard as you want to. You're not going to push as hard as you can because you don't want to fall and you're hanging on for dear life. Um, but if you're skating with 88s on a wooden floor, like, you know, if a wooden floor is a pretty grippy floor already, most of the time, that's going to feel like you're skating in mud. That's going to wear you out. Then you want a higher number. So a slippery floor, you want super grippy wheels. On a grippy floor, you want higher number wheels because it will help you skate faster with control. All right, pro tip number three. Where's your finish line when you set this up? If you're finishing like 10, 20 feet away from your goal, think about setting up the perfect finish line because when you think about it, when you're doing these laps, you always lose a tiny bit of speed when you're going around the turns. If you set up the finish line to be on the straightaway, you can just run straight at the thing. Just run, run, run. And you don't have to slow down at all because you're not saving any kind of control to go around the next turn. So if you finish on the straightaway instead of just around the turn, that's going to help. That's going to help a lot. So obviously tip number four is where's your starting line? Because your starting line and your finish line are the same. So how do you get the best of both worlds? How can you start with a lot of speed and finish with a lot of speed? So the trick I've learned, because you don't want to just suddenly go into the turn and slow down. I, I like to set up near the pivot line. And I like to set up near the outside of the pivot line. That seems really weird, right? Because I'm a little bit further, I'm, I'm lengthening my distance, but I set up somewhere between the middle and the outside of the pivot line on that line. And it's all about angles. I angle it so I'm gonna run straight at the turn and out of the turn. I am gonna run the first like whole half of the track. I'm not gonna slow down for a while. I'm just gonna run all the way around. So by not having to run slow down and then like, I'm going to build up speed so much faster because I just run at that thing and then I go. And then when I finish, I'm finishing running straight at that pivot line. And in this way I can sneak in another lap. It's pretty swell. I really like it. <laughs> so especially if you're close, maybe just change where, where you start and finish. That could just be enough in itself. Pro tip number five, the big, the thing I've learned is that the biggest opportunity you have for improvement in your time is between minutes three and four. 
I've seen this with everybody because you're starting, you start out strong, you're continuing strong. Then you get past the halfway point and you start to get tired. And then you hear that there's one minute left and you give it everything left you've got. And your last minute is really strong. It looks similar to your first minute. This is what I've found average across the board for most people. So there's opportunity between minutes three and four. That's a magical time where you could get in some extra lap. So if you find yourself on the downhill end and you're starting to relax or get tired, instead of picking it up when you hear one minute left, pick it up when there's two minutes left. See if you can go two minutes balls to the wall for an expression and just see if you can crush it because I mean, the length of a jam is two minutes, right? You can do anything for two minutes. Forget about the other three minutes. Those didn't even happen. You're starting fresh right now. Like just crush the last two minutes, no matter what happens before it. And I think you'll find overall a more consistent average lap time because you're just going to crush it. So this is when you push. Uh, pro tip number six, count down your laps instead of up. Have your counting partner tell you how many you have left to go instead of how many you have already earned. Because it seems, it feels like you're going downhill instead of uphill. Instead of climbing to the top to 27, you are skating down, speeding ahead to one. So uh, it, it really helps in the last minute if you hear you only have like, oh, just six more to go. And then you're like, oh, six laps. That's nothing. I can do six laps. I've already done whatever. It's fine. Another pro tip I have, number seven on my list, is find a bunny to chase. So uh, in like races, they would have like greyhounds chase a little fake bunny. Sometimes you need a bunny. And that bunny needs to be tantalizing. That bunny needs to be somebody just like you, but a little better. Somebody you want to chase. If you can keep pace with the person who's just a little bit faster with you than you, you're going to be faster too. This is my favorite one. I love chasing people. If we divide into two groups uh, so that we can count for each other and, and do two time, time trials, I will always make sure I am in a group with people who are similar in speed to me. I need at least one or two to chase and not be caught by because I know that they use me for a bunny too. So my goal is, okay, uh, Trixie's never going to catch me and I'm going to catch Bella and then I'm going to catch this person if I, if I manage to pass my bunny. So yeah, if you pass your bunny, I uh, just chase the next person and the next person. I skate so much faster when there's other people, like not a zillion other people, but there needs to be people because I'm like, ah, oh, the next person, the next person. I love passing because I'm competitive and that's what makes me skate fast. So, um, my last tip for improving your laps and for improving beyond the 27 laps is learn your pace and where you can improve. This actually helps too if you haven't passed yet. Um, if someone with an iPhone, I know the timer app has a perfect way to do this where you can hit the lap button and you can see the time for each individual lap. You can see where you've slowed down. I've already talked about uh, most people slow down between minutes three and four, but you can also get an eye of how long does it take me to do that very first lap? Could I have a stronger takeoff just to get going? Um, or maybe I'm slowing down in the last minute because I didn't save enough for the end. Uh, how do I get more, generate more energy for the end there? Uh, so if you have more data, you can solve this problem. You also want to work with your counting person and ask them for the specifics that you need to be successful. I am uh, a little meticulous. I ask a lot of my counting partner. I ask to be told each minute on the minute um, that, you know, one minute, I want to hear how many laps I have at that point. You know, it could be like one minute, six laps. Okay. You know, and I do that because I know exactly the pace I need to get my target, to get my target each time. And I'll know immediately if I'm off pace and I, if I need to speed it up or if I'm doing well, I'm never going to slow down, but I always, I do need to know if I need to speed up. So, all right, let's talk a little bit about the idea of this all being this big test, this barrier to entry. I was thinking about this this morning 
And one of the best things I can find to compare it to is your driver's ed test. <laughs> In the States, at least, I'm not sure how it works other countries, but I'm sure it's similar. You have to take a written test and then a practical driving test to get a driver's license. You must pass both. The practical test is you're driving around with an instructor who will ask you to do things. Many people do not pass on the first try, so they have to go again, or the second. But you have to pay to take this test, and the reward is freedom from your parents. <laughs> so young people put in a lot of effort to get a passing grade, because when you pass, you go off into your life as a driver. You're, it feels like you're joining society. I mean, and at that point, you'll, you'll get a little better at driving with experience, but your life goal probably isn't to be the best driver in the world. You're not striving for anything. You just want to be a safe driver. And you wanted the power to do it and the freedom to go wherever you want, whenever you want, assuming you have a car. If you weren't good at parallel parking, you might just drive several blocks out of the way to find a new spot. And you will have the power to do that because, you know, I've got a license. I can do what I want. I don't have to be the best at parallel parking. But with roller derby, it's different. You are never done learning. This test gives you access, but there's still so much to learn. And I'm not saying that to discourage you, but to encourage you, like, there's a big world out there of learning and you are never done finessing even the most basic skills. You're going to have to fight to get on a roster. Passing your skills does not mean you're done. You can just slack off now. And how you pass your skills gives the team a preview of what to expect from you. If you work hard and make slow but consistent progress, they're going to know something about you. They're going to know you don't give up. And that if you struggle, you're going to work really hard and you're going to get there. They're going to believe in you. If everything comes easily to you and you pass on the first try and then you skip out on endurance nights, they're also going to learn something about you. That's going to speak volumes about the type of player you're going to be for them. So passing your skills does not guarantee a spot on the team. You will have to fight to get on a roster. You will have to fight to stay on a roster. If you barely squeak by doing 180 transitions both ways, that weak side, it's going to get you <laughs> because there's going to be a different skill where you need to transition to that way, to your side that isn't as strong. And it's, it's going to, it's, you gotta, you gotta have balance. You gotta have these skills and you gotta be good at them. So never stop drilling your basic skills. Your journey is far from over. Next time, we will be exploring how to get on a roster after you've passed your skills. Thank you so much for listening. Please, again, rate and review on every place that this podcast is. Share it with your friends. Share it with your teammates. Please spread it with the world. Spread it with your, with your rookie skaters, with everybody, and make this a wonderful, beautiful place to do roller derby. Yeah. Okay. We have been talking about derby and sharing derby thoughts. Pew, pew.